Hey everybody, Ryan here from the Lone Ranger. Uh, I lost the audio for this beginning part of the track, so we're just gonna go ahead and ram this audio over top of the video and uh, take it as it lies. So what am I doing out here sitting in this lawn chair with my beer floating in space for some reason? Um, oh, hey, look at that sweet jump. I'm gonna pretend like I didn't know that was happening even though I did. Anyways, uh, we're here to talk about car camping for mountain bikers. I find myself driving off into the mountains many, many times throughout the year, and oftentimes I've gotta stop have a sleep either before I get there or, there or when I get there so I can be nice and fresh for riding the next day. We're gonna go over some essential tips and tricks for doing just that. Ooh, not too bad. All right, so we gotta start with the actual vehicle itself. Now, this is a 2008 Nissan Pathfinder. It's a seven-seater SUV and it folds down flat in the back, which is obviously very important if you want a car camp. Um, when I was shopping for this vehicle, I just bought it a few months ago, um, whether or not I could actually stretch out all the way in it was a big deal. And so, uh, you know, I got to freak some people out, these like private sale people who are trying to sell their car with me folding down all the seats and just laying down like flat as a board in the back before I would like decide whether or not I'd want to buy that vehicle. Uh, but this one was perfect. So uh, I fit really well in it. I can stretch out all the way. So it works out really well for me, which is a big consideration if you do want to do more car camping. And so that is one big thing that I did want to make sure would work out with this vehicle and it does. So that's kind of like step number one. Will you fit laying down in the car? All right, so you're there with your vehicle, which hopefully fits you pretty well for sleeping. But now you got the whole thing of, you got a bike on you. And I know a lot of vehicles, the bike's not gonna fit with you in the vehicle while you sleep. Um, fortunately, this vehicle is a pretty decent size. And so I can actually fit my bike in here, nice and cozy with me. I can cuddle up to it at night. Oh, it's so nice. But what if you can't do that? I know a lot of vehicles, it's just not enough space for you and the bike and your wheels and stuff. So what do you do? Uh, let's go over that. So the most obvious place to put your bike, not in the vehicle, is on a bike rack that you can lock it onto. That's kind of a no-brainer. And I've got this on the back, it's a North Shore rack, and I can put the bike on there, lock my bike to this, and then lock the rack to the vehicle, good to go. Now that's the most clear option. Now what if you don't have a bike rack? Most hitches will have a couple of loops, or at least one down here, that you can uh, lock your bike to. Another kind of less thought about option would be actually locking it to the wheel of your vehicle. I've done that too. Um, sometimes I've been in a rental car and there's just no way we're gonna fit in the vehicle and there's no hitch on it. Uh, I just run the cable lock straight through here and into the frame and you're good to go there, nice and safe. And then lastly, if you're really out of options but you have a roof rack, uh, you can, uh, you know, if you brought a blanket with you or something like that, you can throw your bike on top and actually lock it straight to the roof rack uh, and be good to go. And if somebody's trying to steal it from the roof rack or even from your wheel, I would expect you'd probably hear it or feel it, the vehicle moving, given that you're like three feet away from it. So pretty good options. So when I show up anywhere, um, or actually even before I leave to go somewhere, I usually try and set up the back uh, so that it's ready to go when I get there to go to sleep. A lot of times I'll be leaving after I finish work for the day and I'm driving, you know, five hours or something like that. And I'll try and make it so that when I get there, it's pretty much bedtime, like 11 o'clock, midnight, that kind of a thing. Uh, pretty much one I can't or don't want to drive anymore. If you can't find a place, you know, like this, it's just kind of out in the woods, um, you know, sometimes I'll park in just like a parking lot in the middle of a, t uh, you know, mountain town or whatever. And in which case, you don't really want to be drawing too much attention to yourselves by, you know, like blowing up air mattresses, tossing out the sleeping bags and stuff like that. So I try to make sure it's all good to go before I leave so that when I'm ready to go to bed, I can just get out of the driver's seat, hop in the back, and I'm good to go. Now power, power is a really big deal in these kind of situations, especially for people like me who one, I'm going mountain biking, but two, I'm filming my rides too. So I need to be charging a lot of batteries a lot of the times, and even just your phone battery, right? Like that's super important for this kind of a thing. So in this uh, handy dandy little lunch kit here that uh, I picked up, which is perfect for this, is a nice big chunky lithium battery pack. Now. As you guys know, I'm a photographer, and so this actually comes from the photographer world. Uh, it's from Paul C. Buff, and it's called the Vegabond Mini Lithium. There are plenty of battery packs out there, uh, more on the consumer grade side of things where you can get a couple of charges on your phone or whatever. But I know that when I bring this guy, uh, I'm gonna have solid power for charging up all my stuff for at least two to three days before it runs down. So yeah, it's uh, definitely one of the best things that I found out there. Um, pretty standard, it's just got two regular plugs uh, on either side there. There's a USB port, but you can't actually charge through that, so I'm not really sure what that's actually for. But uh, you can just plug whatever you need into there, like this big, giant, massive battery charging, terrible awfulness. So yeah, always bring some portable power. 
because you don't really want to be drawing your, your vehicle battery down the whole time. So this really is a lifesaver, sometimes literally. So the next tip is about uh, ventilation in the vehicle. And sure, we're talking about farts, but we're also just talking about general mugginess. <laughs> in the summertime, it can get pretty muggy. It's actually freezing cold out here right now. It's, it's getting close to zero degrees Celsius, and there's like snow behind the camera. But in the summertime, it can get pretty hot in the car, even overnight, at least muggy for sure. So to help with that, uh, you want to be able to crack the windows, but you'll end up getting bugs in the vehicle, which you don't want either. So a little tip that I have for you guys is if you go and find a stroller, a mesh stroller cover um, from like, you know, used kids shops or whatever, used kids toys shops. I don't know, those shops for parents where it's like a bunch of used stuff that doesn't cost quite as much. You can go get one of these covers and it's basically just mesh with like an elastic bottom to it. And so all you do is you slip it right over the door frame to however low you need it to be and uh, close up the door so the door is sealed and then you can just roll down your window but that it's covered in mesh and you're not gonna get, you know, the bugs and flies and stuff in your vehicle while you sleep. The other kind of version of this that I'd actually like to do for next summer is a sunroof version. So getting a piece of uh, mesh fabric and cutting a rectangle that covers, you know, more than obviously the, the size of the sunroof and actually gluing magnet uh, strips all the way around the outsides so it kind of magnetizes to the top of the roof and then you can just kind of open up the sunroof a crack and it lets out all of the humidity and heat and all those sorts of things. And then you don't even have to roll down your window. So that could be another uh, sort of neat thing. Maybe if anybody wants to try that and report back if you do, uh, that'd be cool to hear from you guys. All right, so coffee. Um, there is one coffee maker that really works well on the road and I think it's the best coffee maker for the road. Some might argue, but they would be wrong. Uh, this right here, it's called an AeroPress. If you haven't heard of it, um, it is incredibly portable. This is the entire unit right here, uh, other than you know what, your coffee grinder and your beans. And this makes uh, not only a quick cup of coffee, but it cleans up super easily. Um, like pretty much after you press your coffee through, it's just like this little puck of coffee that you can just throw into a garbage or whatever and seal it off so that bears don't come looking for it. Um, but not only all of those things, but it also makes one of the world's best cups of coffee. They actually even have a, like uh, competitions, like AeroPress competitions. Now, as far as the coffee itself, I don't like having to look after like milk and stuff uh, in, a, in a cooler. And so I found that if you're the type of person that does like uh, cream in their coffee, which I used to be, um, you can get around that by buying really good quality, properly roasted stuff. Um, this just happens to be a brand that's out of my hometown. It's called Transcend Coffee. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. I just thought I'd mention it. The way that they end up roasting their beans is a little bit different and it's a lot lighter of a roast. And so I found that with this type of coffee, you do not need um, cream in it. Like I know before uh, I found this kind of stuff, if I was just having like run of the mill coffee, honestly, without some cream in it, I didn't think it tasted very good. <laughs> But when I stopped drinking cream a few years back, I ended up finding this stuff because I was looking for a coffee that I didn't need cream in. And it's super delicious without the cream. It's actually much better if there's no cream in it. So going with a really nice, lightly roasted coffee uh, kind of allows you to have your coffee and not have to worry about keeping you know, milk in refrigeration while you're out. And it's just really, really freaking good. All right, so that's about it for now. It's starting to get dark and uh, I gotta go to sleep because we got a big day of riding tomorrow. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you have any more tips for car camping out in the woods or anywhere in town, uh, leave it down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.